Hi everyone, this is Trevor from astrobackyard.com and uh, ever since I started adding H-alpha exposures to my astrophotography images I've been getting a lot of questions of how I combine the HA uh, frames with the regular color RGB exposures. In this tutorial I'm going to hop on Adobe Photoshop, process each image separately and then show you exactly how to combine the two to create an HA RGB composite image. The entire details of this process will be outlined in the tutorial section of astrobackyard.com. The H alpha exposures were captured using um, an astronomic 12 nanometer HA filter for my Canon Rebel T3i. This filter blocks out almost all wavelengths of light except for a very narrow band of H alpha data. The RGB images are simply uh, color exposures taken straight out of the camera. The whole point of this process is to combine the true color data captured by the RGB images with the enhanced detail, enhanced contrast, smaller stars uh, of the H-alpha frames for a dramatically improved astrophotography image. So let's hop onto Photoshop now and uh, I'll walk you through the process. If you like this kind of thing, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Now I'm going to hop on to Photoshop and share my screen with you. If you've got your own color and H-alpha images that you've, you've been waiting to combine, you can follow along with me and this is a, this is a good way to do it in Photoshop. Uh, there should be a link in the description to the, uh, the detailed steps of this process on my website as well. Okay, now you should be seeing my screen. We're here in Adobe Bridge to start off with. Um, so before combining the images, you'll need to create a master file for both the full color and the H-alpha versions. Uh, we'll start by taking a look at the photos I've taken using, using only a light pollution filter of NGC 1499, the California Nebula. Now these weren't shot from the backyard. Uh, frames would look much more blown out um, through the light pollution here. This was shot from a dark sky site back in October 2014 and these are 300 second exposures at ISO 1600 shot with uh, my old modified Canon Rebel XSI. So uh, just like any other astrophotography processing session you would want to go through each one of these frames and uh, check to make sure that your guiding was okay and there's no fuzzy stars or satellite trails um, traveling through the image uh, anything like that so I've actually already looked through all of these and they are ready for stacking so it looks like I've got 36 frames in total to stack at uh, five minutes each so that's a decent amount of time so I'm just gonna open up deep sky stacker here and oh look at that there they are so uh, I'm gonna open my light frames here and I should just take you through that open picture files uh, astrophotography 2014 October 25th okay so here's my light frames and it's actually kind of interesting you can see how the object as it got higher in the sky the contrast became much better if you look at the difference between image 186 here and 221 uh, it's quite uh, quite a difference God knows why I stopped taking light frames at that time uh, I'm sure I must have had to pack up and go it must have been getting late but regardless uh, I'm happy to have these frames so we'll go ahead and load them in as picture files and then uh, we're gonna select dark files and uh, they were in the same folder there I wasn't as good at uh, my file management and folder management back then uh, and we have our dark frames here and unfortunately I didn't shoot any bias or flat frames these days I wouldn't even dream of not doing that but uh, I was just living on the edge in 2014 I guess so then we're gonna go ahead and check all and register checked pictures and since I've went through all of them, I'm going to tell Deep Sky Stacker to use 100% of the pictures and stack them. It's telling me, of course, that I need uh, my flat and offsets, which I don't have. 
but I'm just going to take a look at the recommended settings here. Um, everything seems to be good. Every, all the exposures match. Uh, I'm not going to make any changes here. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And oh, look at that, three hours exactly. So um, I'll check back in with you after our RGB uh, file has been stacked and registered. So Deep Sky Stacker has finished uh, registering and stacking uh, the RGB image. We ended up with three hours total, 36 frames at ISO 1600. Now you can see the California Nebula here. And uh, so we'll bring this into Photoshop for uh, further processing. So this is where I'm at here. Uh, and because this tutorial is on combining the HA with the RGB, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, going through each processing step for the RGB, but I will take you through my history steps here just for a, a quick rundown. So uh, a quick crop of the edges, uh, levels adjustment, um, switch to a 16-bit image from a 32, uh, and then I go and use Gradient Exterminator to um, help out that gradient there, although there's still a bit of a gradient in, in the final image, you'll see that. Uh, the color sampler tool, um, getting the background black color set, uh, the white point, more gradient removal. You see this is why flats would have been great. Uh, and then I'm running an action here which is local contrast enhance enhancement um, from the astronomy tools action set. And then another crop, levels adjustment. Select color range, uh, vibrance uh, adjustment, vibrance and saturation. Another curve stretch. Um, and then these actions were uh, increased star color, uh, a sharpen, and a final curve stretch to make it pop there. So here's our final RGB image that we're going to be combining with the HA. And of getting um, this, that was a quick run through. And this this image is by no means perfect. Um, as you guys all know, you can go on for hours and hours getting your uh, get on your processing. Even the, some of the stars don't look as sharp as I would like them to see them, but for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, this this will work for our RGB image. Next, we'll go ahead and stack the hydrogen alpha. So I'm back here in Deep Sky Stacker. I'm going to navigate to the HA exposures of the California Nebula, which were taken this year. I took them on two nights. Um, I'm just going to use the ones from November 4th. And you can see those here. I should have them open in Bridge as well. So these were shot from the backyard. It's uh, one of the benefits of a filter like this. It can shoot through light pollution, which is uh, a nice benefit. So these are all the frames here, and we're just going to uh, open them all up uh, just like you would for a color image. Um, select them all here. Open light frames. And you also want to take darks for HA. California Nebula. So I grouped. I also shot the horse head that night in HA. And these are the same darks from that session. 240 seconds each. Okay, so we've got 20 darks and 49 light frames. And we're going to register checked pictures, 100% of them. Um, I always like to have this register already registered pictures checked. The rest is going to be default. Um, I could use super pixel mode um, when stacking HA. Uh, but that has crashed my computer in the past, so I don't think I'm going to do that this time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to run this here, and look at that, just over three hours. So I'm going to run this, and then I'll bring the HA stacked image into Photoshop. So I've got it here in Photoshop, and uh, I'm just going to quickly walk you through some of the steps I took to process this version. Um, so I converted it to a 16-bit TIFF, adjusted the levels slightly. This is still all within the, um, using in the RGB channel. Uh, and then I selected just the red channel. 
uh, which is where all the detail is, all, all pretty much all of the data is in the red here. So I, I selected that um, channel, copied that onto a new layer, um, and onto a new image, a new complete canvas, and then process this channel on its own. Um, and let's see, I'm just going through the history here, levels and curves, um, some uh, Carboni's uh, actions, including uh, local contrast enhancement, some brightness contrast, and here we have the final hydrogen alpha version of the California Nebula that we can now um, combine with the RGB. So you'll want to save this file. Uh, so I've got this Kali HA final .tiff, and then I've got my uh, RGB final over here. Uh, I've actually just made it a little bit smaller. I did a version for the blog. So here it is. Here's the RGB final and here's the HA final. So you can see right off the bat they're they're not this at the same scale. Uh, this version here of the hydrogen alpha was taken with the T3i through uh, the 102 millimeter telescope and this one was taken through an XSI with an 80 millimeter telescope. So we're going to have to do some scaling to get them to match up. Uh, normally you guys would probably have taken your images through the same scope so uh, you won't have such a drastic uh, difference there and, and a challenge for co combining them. Uh, so we've got our RGB and our, our HA finals and uh, the next step I'm going to show you how to um, first scale them and then combine them. Okay so here's the first step towards finishing our HA RGB version composite image uh, of the California Nebula. So the first thing we need to do is create an HAR version of the image. Now, so that would be hydrogen alpha plus the red channel only of the RGB. So looking at our RGB final here, we're going to go into channels and click on the red channel. And we're going to select the entire layer, copy it, and paste it onto our TIFF file, our hydrogen alpha TIFF file. These are both TIFFs I'm working with here. So this is what I was talking about when I said it's the scale is way off and uh, so because I shot it through different scopes so look at the look how different it is it's a much wider field of view in, in my RGB and then of course I'm, I'm zoomed right in for my HA. It's a combination of different camera different telescope. So what you'll need to do is scale these images uh, to match up if, if you're in a situation like mine. Hopefully you're not. Uh, and you don't want to scale up because you're losing resolution. Um, so I wouldn't just take this top layer and match it up like this because that would this top layer would lose resolution. What you'll need to do is scale down your bottom layer. So what I mean by that is uh, use this background layer and scale that down to match this one. And it took quite a while. I started shooting a video about that and it, it was honestly five minutes of me rotating and scaling. So uh, I've pre-done that. Um, so if we turn this off, here's the RGB red layer and underneath it is the AJ. So you can see they match up now. And so just look how much I'm gonna crop away of the RGB. So this is, this is going to be our final image here where they overlap. Put that on top. Okay, so to create this HAR version, we're going to just, um, so we'll have the RGB on the bottom and the HA on the top at about 20 to 30%. I think we're going to go with 30. Let's just see. Yeah, so as, as you add this layer on the top, the stars will get smaller and you'll see more of the, uh, the smooth hydrogen alpha details. So I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go 35. So now that I've got these together, I'm going to go ahead and crop this area here. So I could rotate just, uh, just to get a little bit more out of it. So I'm going to take these two layers and rotate it slightly just to get that bottom flat edge. 
and then I always do this I use the, the guidelines to get the most out of my cropped area so there is a trade-off I get a little more I might rotate it back I'd rather get the detail up here than rather than down there it's it's horrible to lose any of it but uh, that's why uh, you want to get that object framed up when you're in the field properly so I don't let stuff like this happen again there we go so this is going to be our final image uh, area here I'm just going to go ahead and crop this okay I can delete these so there's the RGB red channel and here's 35% of the hydrogen alpha on top I'm going to merge these layers and save as Kali HR TIFF and save. Okay, so we've got our three files now the RGB, the HA, and the H HAR. The next step is to create a new version of the RGB image that uses the HAR uh, version uh, as the red channel in the RGB. So to do that, we're going to copy our HAR version. So select the canvas, copy, go into our RGB image here, select the red channel, and paste that HAR version of the image into the red channel. Now when you click the uh, eyeball next to RGB you're gonna see the hybrid image here. So now that new HAR version is the is the red channel in our original RGB image. Okay here's where it gets fun. Here's where all the work of scaling and matching stars and layers and channels uh, all the work that we did on that starts to pay off because we're very close to our final HARGB image. So here we're looking at the uh, modified RGB uh, version of the image where we used the new red channel which was had the combination of HA and the regular red. Uh, and we're going to, on this RGB image, we're going to go to filter, uh, dust and scrap noise, dust and scratches, and we're gonna I'm using for this image that this scale I'm using radius of 10 uh, you want to blur out most but not all of the stars <clears throat> there we go and then once we've done that we're gonna go back to our our straight up hydrogen alpha version of the image copy that and paste that as a new layer on top of, of this uh, our new RGB and then <clears throat> we're going to set the blending mode to luminosity. I don't know about you, but this this stage is finally where it's like, yes, this is what I was waiting for. <laughs> um, and so we're going to set the opacity to about 75%. And uh, just the image I'm seeing on my screen right now excites me. This is This is the kind of stuff I looked at when I first got into astrophotography and said like one day I'm gonna take shots that look like that and I'm seeing it on the screen I captured this I processed this it's actually happening so it's a pretty exciting moment and I hope you uh, experience it as well so we've got this layer of luminosity at 75 percent here um, and we are going to make this just a little bit better because it looks a little pinky and uh, we can we can improve on, on this image a little bit so to do that we are going to um, adjust the curves so on the bottom RGB layer we're gonna go to adjustments curves and uh, we're gonna uh, just do a slight uh, adjustment upwards Okay, and then on the top uh, luminosity hydrogen alpha layer, 
we're going to grab curves again, but this time we're going to lower the dip. Okay, here we have it. Now I'm just going to crop. There we go. And I might actually bump up my uh, hydrogen alpha layer just a little bit more just to get that detail. And so here's our final image, our HARGB version of the California Nebula. Now you can flatten this image and do some more processing to it if you'd like. Um, I'm probably going to leave this as is and obviously there's fine tuning that you could make all the way along. I see some strange coloring, the green halo around the star there and all that sort of fun stuff you can work on uh, when processing astrophotography images. But I think I got my point across at uh, the process for creating an HARGB image and hopefully you stayed along with me. I will say that you can make life easier by um, if you are scaling images and trying to match stars up I would pre-match them up uh, before you paste them in um, rather than trying to align that red channel layer on its own. It can be a bit frustrating. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you've, you've been able to uh, take something from that and uh, you've created your first uh, HARGB image. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching so much and thanks, thank you for being a part of the Astro Backyard community. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers. So I, I've, I've daily just getting amazing comments from around the world about this. Uh, I, so that's something I never expected when, uh, when making this channel. So thank you all for watching and um, all the best. Clear skies.